Hello everyone, this is Kevin. We're bringing you a vidcast on the topic of what I'd like to see for 9th edition. Um, I'd like to start really kind of with the, the rumor that's going around, which is the introduction of factions and the reduction of armies. Um, you know, I know that there a lot of people are worried about losing their armies or, um, you know, making their models obsolete. And I think those are all valid concerns, but um, I also feel that if factions are done right, it could be a great thing for the hobby, bring a lot of energy um, and excitement. It also helped Games Workshop with their cash flow problem um, and kind of get them out of this cycle or funk that they're in. I think a lot of the reason why Games Workshop is hurting right now is because the current model doesn't work anymore. Um, it made a lot of sense back in the old days when Games Workshop was growing and it was growing the army list, but things have stabilized now. In addition to that, things move a lot faster now when, than when the hobby started. Um, you have video games now that, that are coming out and catching people's attention. Other game systems now that have learned from Games Workshop now have excellent sculptors and excellent game systems. There's no reason to wait for a stagnated system that, that isn't moving. And so Games Workshop has itself in this huge cycle where um, they have 14 armies and and they have this massive rule book that they they update maybe every five plus years. Um, the armies themselves, either you get updated with the, you know two armies within one year, sometimes they don't even get around to them. So you have armies that get updated at a minimum of maybe four years and up to 10 plus years. And that's a long time for a person that's in the hobby to... To, to get an update. So as far as getting the person's uh, interest, you know, after a while we just get bored and, 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 and we lose um, interest. So a person that's in this particular cycle has several choices. One, they could buy a new army. Two, they could um, just quit playing altogether and wait for an update. Um, or three, kind of like, like if, if the expense of the new army is too too much, they could turn around and look to trade. Um, but if you notice, with the exception of buying a new army, every single situation is a bad business model for Games Workshop. Um, now, I will say this. These long cycles um, do affect their sales. I, I'll give you a personal experience uh, with myself. Uh, after, you know, I've, I've been playing Warhammer since third edition. And I do play, you know, throughout my life, as a hobbyist for Games Workshop, I've had taken breaks uh, simply because life gets too busy during my college years. And now as a family man, um, sometimes family takes precedence as well as work. And so I, I have to put the hobby down. My latest uh, hiatus was almost eight years of me not playing the game. And um, when I started playing the army, the new army book came out. It was just perfect timing. And so all I had to do was buy a new rule book and a new army book. And all the models that I had for eight years were still usable. Um, you know, I, I didn't have to buy a gyro. Um, I'm a dwarf player. But I, I bought a couple, maybe one or two. But that's it. So after eight years, all I had to do to start the hobby all over again is, um, is buy the, a new army book and a new rule book. And that's not really a good situation for Games Workshop to be in. That's, that, that shows you that there's not a lot of reason to buy models. And when I look at what's out in the market today, let's just say that they had a, a good amount of new models. It's all the same models. The only difference is at the time that I bought the models, I paid $20. And now I'm for the same exact set of models, I'm paying now um, $45. And so, you, you know, it's, it's for me... I got a memory. I'm thinking, wow, it's almost twice the price for the same exact product. So they got a very stagnant and stale process of updating army books and also updating miniatures. And that's not really a win for Games Workshop. And the only way that they seem to be able to generate revenue is from continually, continuously bleeding their existing fan base. Uh, and, and part of that reason also is... In every version that they iterate, they make it so that larger unit army blocks are necessary. And so now you also have the fact that for a person to start this hobby, 
it's a substantial investment just for them to start playing the games on a regular basis. So it, it's it's uh, not a really good model for Games Workshop. It, it, I mean, it's a fantastic system. I love the hobby, but I'm already vested in it. I don't know if I could start this hobby and just have to spend a minimum of five to to a thousand dollars just to get started. Um, especially, very it's very hard. You know, sometimes people easily grow into it. But here, there's no choice. Uh, 1,000 point games, 500 point games really don't give you a good feel for it. And you don't really have enough points to field these larger blocks that would that really catch our attention and catch our imagination. And it wasn't like that before. Games Workshop was not that expensive back in the day. It was actually one of the cheaper uh, model industry when I started gaming. I, I remember you could buy five Game Workshops model for one Ralph Partha or... Reaper uh, model, and now it's it's quite the opposite. <laughs> so so they're in a situation. So then, how does factions help them? Well, if done right, I see that w you'd have one army book that covers several different armies. And in addition to that, if they you know, I think back of third edition, right? If you think of third third edition, they had one army book that had all of the armies, and and then at the very end of the army book, they had allies and they had mercenaries and so you had the option to run your army as it was but say you got bored say you wanted to try something new or there was a new unit you wanted to try out you could use allies and you could use mercenaries and to supplement your army and give it a different flavor um, it made it easy for you to try different armies and, and play around with them without having to do the huge investment of, of having to buy a whole entire new army for a particular faction uh, and I think if they do that situation if they do that for for the new rule sets it'd be fantastic I mean now all of a sudden you don't have to this big investment so you kind of transition yourself to a new army or you could constantly try um, going between two different armies it'll also keep the stagnation down because now if I get bored with a certain style I could season season up my army as as, as you as you can't will and add another, you know, another army here and there or another unit here and there. <clears throat> um, uh, in addition to that, the factions, then, I wouldn't have to wait almost 10 years for a new army book. These factions would then be, uh, can actually be updated at a much faster frequency where you would update several armies at one point. So now you get this fresh um, renewal that doesn't have to happen um, as slow as it's happening today. Um, so that's kind of what I see. If, if Games Workshop does factions right, it, it might be a, a great thing, you know, but I don't know. Now, if they turn around and do the worst case scenario where they just completely get rid of armies or and have one core army in their factions and then just have like units here and there, I think that's a bad thing. And I think that at that point, a lot of people's concern are going to be valid, you know, validated and and the, in my opinion the system is going to go down now that said i'd like to move on as to let's pretend that that's what games workshop does how do we make ninth edition more enjoyable than eighth edition um i will say this games workshop um has done a fantastic job in making every version much more playable than the previous version and i and i've liked every version better than the previous one version yeah, kind of with the exception of seventh. I thought seventh. I thought sixth was a better version than seventh. But I think eighth edition is by far the best edition that they've made to date. And um, I think it's fluid. Um, I think a lot of the rules make sense. It's been simplified in areas that don't need the uh, to be over complex. And uh, it just kind of flows better. I think there's a better balance between armies. I know that a lot of people talk about an imbalanced army today, but. In my experience and in the history of Games Workshop, we have I have personally seen um, greater divergences in power than than I do in Eighth Edition. I mean, I'm not counting End Times. End Times does kind of remind me back of the old Fifth Edition where the term Hero Hammers came out because heroes pretty much won your battles in Fifth, fifth Edition. You don't see that too much in Eighth Edition. Um, they do have a they do have a place that kind of tilts the game, but it's no longer characters winning the, the, the games. It's now armies, tactics, and position. 
with characters kind of help giving you a hedge. Um, so that said, you know, that's kind of what I feel um, I like to see, you know. So with that said, you know, I think 8th is good. Can it be better? Yep. Uh, what what areas do, you, do I think could be improved upon? And that's something I like to talk about right now. So for starters, I'd like to see um, the removal of special weapons. I, I, that rule doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It kind of gives away a lot of strategic advantages that a person has during a game. kind of now forces you, when you buy something, you're stuck with that particular special weapon. And I kind of like the idea of, hey, do I want a great weapon or do I want to go in with a hand weapon and shield? Um, I'd like to see that, that rule removed. Um, impact kits. Um, you know, since I can remember, impact hits have always been you you crash into your opponent and you roll a, a D6 damage or, you know, D3. And I never really liked that mechanic. I, the auto hits never made a lot of sense to me. Um, simply because I don't see people standing in the way and just getting ran over. I'd like to see maybe initiative tests being in, introduced where faster, more agile troops are jumping out of the way um, instead of just sitting there and taking a charge. So with that said, um, you know, if we implement that mechanics, I'd also like to see impact hits also disrupt the unit that it charges. It, you know, because in the same token, if you have people jumping and dodging and getting out of way, the way of a, a chariot or a large monster, then, then it makes sense that they're disrupted because they no longer have their formation. And so you kind of now reduce the amount of damage that, that an impact like a chariot would do but at least you give them some advantage that they no longer are up against an organized uh, rank of file troop so now it just comes down to hand to hand combat who could win and I think that's a little bit more realistic as to what we would see in, in a real um, ancient battle Yeah. so one of the rules that, that I kind of lamented that went away after 3rd edition was striking in initiative order um, I know it was there for subsequent rounds but I never really liked the fact that if you charged you got the first attack it, it never made a lot of sense to me from a game system I just you know it, in me and my con you know when I've taught when I've learned martial arts or, or in my wrestling it wasn't the first person that engaged that got the first attack simply that was um, that was a great way for you to counter somebody when they engaged so it, it never made sense that a faster opponent would automatically get struck first um, and so so I never liked that mechanic so I'm happy to see initiative being brought back but what I don't like is the fact that it wasn't brought, brought back in its entirety it's kinda again in, in, in Games Workshop's effort, effort to oversimplify the process they've omitted certain things that I think would have added flavor to striking it in initiative order for instance I'd like to see the reintroduction of getting a bonus on the charge f for your initiative. Um, I also remember in third edition that what you con the considerations you took for weapons was a lot more than now. It seems nowadays you're either going to take hand weapons or great weapons, and there's a few cases where you don't have access to a great weapon, so you'll take a halberd or a spear. And there's not really a lot of thought in, into which weapon you choose and why you choose it. Simply it becomes what gives you the strength bonus and what, or what gives you the armor save. And that wasn't the case in 3rd edition because weapons used to ha also have, in addition to strength profiles, initiative profiles. So certain weapons gave you an edge over another when it came to striking first. And I really like that about 3rd edition and I really would like to see that in 9th edition be reintroduced. Because I think that would give us a lot more um, versatility in our troop types and allow certain units to actually perform better than others. Um, so that's that's something I'd like to see in 9th edition. Um, there's a crazy amount of war saves today. Um, it seems like everybody now has war saves for no, for no real reason. And the real reason, there's so many attacks that the only way that Games Workshop was able to keep certain models from just completely getting destroyed is to give them arbitrary ward saves. There's the same thing for characters now. It seems every character has access to a 4 plus ward save. In addition to that, some of them even have a greater ward save. And so it kind of takes away, I think, from the strategy. Um, I'd like to see a reduction in the amount of ward saves that we see today. I, I just think it's too crazy right now. 
always winning on six. Um, I got mixed feelings about this. I, I like it, but I don't. Um, I remember the days where you you could bring a dragon with a toughness seven or a toughness nine or or, de- or a demon back when they had uh, ten across all their profiles. You just couldn't hurt these guys, and so they'd pretty much walk around everywhere with no fear of getting shot down or attacked and just whacking and killing every single model in its way. And so I, I do like the fact that we now have answers to those ty- type of units. Uh, the fact that everything wounds on six now makes makes it more makes a person more attentive or uh, careful as to where they put their their uh, heroes or their monsters. But I just feel like it's too easy now for to always wound on a with the always rolling on a six. I think certain things die a lot faster than they should. Um, so I, I'd like to see maybe uh, like a seven plus be introduced where. You still, if you roll a six uh, on a four plus, then you cause a wound. But a six itself wouldn't cause a wound, and this will give more of a balance. It won't make those tough, high toughness monsters or war machines or characters invincible, but it, again, it won't make them so vulnerable that they die so quickly. Moving on to monsters. Hey, who doesn't love monsters? I absolutely love monsters. I like the ideas of monsters running around. One of the things I really dislike about the dwarf army is, is there's no good monsters that we could take. Um, not not like the day of third edition where we could bind any type of monster and run around with our monsters. Here we can't. So, but nonetheless, you know, um, I do like seeing them on the tabletop, uh, and especially as a dwarf player because I don't fear the, fear them. With my cannons and my grudge stores, they easily get torn apart. And that's really not fair for monsters. I like to see monsters actually brought back and give you know not overpowering like they were in the past, but not so vulnerable like they are in eight and six edition. And so some of the some of the things that I would like to see to make monsters a, a bit more reliable um, is maybe um, I think the you know add a rule for the multi wounds. Um, I think the ogre kingdom has a particular monster that only suffers half of the multi wounds, and I think that's a great way to to um, give monsters a bit of an edge so that they don't die, die so easy um, with cannonballs and grudge throw, uh, you know, and stone throwers. I'd also like to see them um, disrupt. Uh, so the fact is, I don't really see troop types kind of sitting in formation and just kind of stay, <laughs> rank up against this huge monster, right? This huge monster is, is stomping and, and, and um, and causing all sorts of havoc. It doesn't make a lot of sense for troop types to be all ranked up. Um, and, and you see this historically, right? Uh, with Hannibal, um, he was able to defeat the Roman legions with these elephants because they were disrupting their, their, their ranks. And so I'd like to see something like that introduced where now the monsters are a little bit more, um, more reliable and they don't flee so easy and now they have a chance to actually um, stay in hand-to-hand combat and make it worth taking. Monsters Infantry. Um, if there's one rule I feel is broken, it's Monsters Infantry. Not only, if you compare the the space that a Monsters Infantry takes versus uh, rank and file, I'm assuming 20 mil- millimeters versus 40 millimeters, you have six attacks that a Monsters Infantry could put in to a regular rank and file that, that could only put four. And on top of that, you have an automatic stomp attack. And I just think that kind of puts the balance too much in Monsters Infantry. You're not paying that much more for Monsters Infantry to get that many more attacks. I'd like to see a, a better balance. Um, I mean, if you rank, if you drop them down to one supporting attack, I think that's a little too few, but maybe just give them only two. And at that point, it'd be a bit more balanced. Um, cavalry. Uh, a lot of people say that cavalry has been nerfed in eighth edition and i personally believe that cavalry is now where they should be um i think that they were too powerful in seventh edition uh the fact that um they could easily a a unit of five only could easily um beat a unit um that was a, a large block just by a flank charge i didn't really like that i didn't like seeing msu type of cavalry where they could control the tabletop and they could control um, their charges and hit you on flanks and all, or rear and all of a sudden win the combat. It just didn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, and now they can't do that anymore now because when they charge, they're stuck 
and in infantry. So I like where where they're at. I know a lot of people complain about it. One one area to improve them is to give them impact hits, and uh, the impact hits kind of based on the the ones that I've described where you have to take an initiative test or else you take a, um, a, a hit. In addition to that, I'd like to see them disrupt uh, inf infantry box. And it makes a lot of sense to me. That's kind of the way ancient battles used to be. Cavalry never won the war. It was always won by infantry. What cavalry did is disrupted the infantry blocks and allowed for a more organized infantry to come and sweep them up. And so if you introduce something like disruptive, um, disrupting or impact hits, you're going to see much more strategy on that battlefield. And, that, and that's something I would really like to see happen in 9th edition. So I, I think, you know, I know some people complain about support, um, Steadfast. I personally understand why Games Workshop put it. And I remember when I first read the rule, I thought this is so broken. It is the worst implementation yet. And, um, and I... After I played it a couple of times, I understood why Games Workshop put this rule in. Um, it gives it gives some form of reliability or guarantee that a unit isn't going to flee the minute it gets charged. Um, you know, with the large number of points that a unit is putting, it's it would be sad just to see a cavalry get a flank charge and all of a sudden the unit flees. Um, and so I, I'm glad to see disruptive, um, or not disruption, but... Um, Steadfast being introduced. Um, there's ways where you could taper it down. I have some ideas, but I really don't want to get into that because I like Steadfast. I think it works in the current meta today. Now, if we move on, if get, if we move on and they implement factions or if they... implement like do new books the one thing i'd like to see is i'd like to see a change in chaos uh the one thing that never made sense to me is this <laughs> united chaos for a greater evil it, i never really liked that um seeing seeing zinch mixed with corn mixed with um slanesh never really made a lot of sense to me it and and i liked it back in the day when games workshop even though they covered it as one army book you still had to run them as um one particular fa fra faction, and so it, and so, I thought that gave a better storyline. I thought you know a lot. I know a lot of people complained about how it wasn't. They weren't as powerful as they were in the past. But to me, it makes more sense. I like to see chaos broken down into four different um, major armies, even though it would be one army book, and you could get to decide how you mix and match your units. The, but I I don't like how people only use Zinch attributes for their characters but then turn around and use Nurgle for the rank of foul and, and it just make, doesn't make a lot of sense to me um, I, you know so that's kind of my beef and my complaint about chaos I'd, I'd like to see ASF for elves get modified I think um, I think having infinite, infinite hatred in addition to always striking first um, just I don't like that policy I, I think I don't like that rule it, it's too you know they're already a good army with all their high weapon skills and high, their high strength attacks. The fact that they need to have this, this bonus, um, I think it just puts them a little bit over the top. In addition to that, they also have a strong magic phase and also the best movement in the game. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's a couple other changes that I, I'd like to make tweaks here and there. But, but if Game Workshop kind of just handles the factions right and kind of fixes certain broken areas of, of certain armies i think ninth edition would be a great addition um you know it'd probably be the best edition yet so this is for this is hopeful hopeful wishing on my part um and this is calmore signing out thank you for listening